Rub up your engines! Well, here we go. Ford got hit with a $1.7 billion judgment against them in court. It was because of fatal crash from a rollover that killed a Georgia couple. Needless to say, the case was in Georgia, and they claim that, well, they didn't build the cab good enough, it wasn't strong enough, and it crushed when it rolled over. Now, they gave them $24 million judgment and compensation, and $1.7 billion in punitive damage. Here's the interesting thing, though. In the state of Georgia, 75% of the money from punitive cases goes to the state. So, that's kind of like conflict of interest. The judge says, hey, let's give my state $1.7 billion, where at least 75% percent of that. The other 25 percent is supposed to be split between the lawyers and the plaintiffs, right? So, as per usual, there's sneaky business going on here. A state judge in Georgia decides to get over a billion dollars for the state by suing Ford, right? If you ever follow any of these cases, nobody ever gets the money. Even at McDonald's when women sued for, I think it was a million dollars, she's spilling hot coffee on herself. It's all settled way down the line. And in this case, a billion something dollars, I'm sure Ford will just keep taking it all the way to the Supreme Court and Georgia won't see a penny of the money. But, you know, these are showcases. The judge is making a name for himself to give the state 75% of $1.7 billion, which they'll probably never see. I mean, sometimes these cases get a little bit absurd in court. I can't believe it, though, that the judge can give punitive damages, but 75% of that money goes to the state. Sounds like something's really corrupt in the state of Georgia, if you ask me. <laughs> Well, here's another example of the phenomenal quality control at GM. 2022 Chevy Equinoxes are being recalled because they don't have the correct catalytic converter bolted on them. I guess when they're building, they say, where's the cats? I don't know, there's a box over there. Throw these ones on. Okay. <laughs> Their quality control has been garbage for so long. This kind of shocks me, though. They're not even putting the right parts on the car. What are the guys in line? Well, this fits. That's good enough. Put it on, baby. Next, next. <laughs> Now, GM calls it a voluntary recall. Yeah, well, they would have been recalled because they didn't do it right. So they're doing it now before the government forces them to. If you got one of these 2022 Equinoxes, get your VIN number. Go to the National Highway Traffic Safety Association.gov website. Put in your VIN number. See if yours is recalled. Then you got to take it to the dealer where they inspect it. And if it's the wrong one, they got to replace it. I mean, these are new vehicles. What's going to happen when they get older? What other parts did they put on that were wrong? You know? Kind of unbelievable the crap that GM puts out these days. Ruben V210 says, Scotty, should I change my CVT fluid? I got a 2015 Corolla with a CV tranny, 117,000 miles. The dealer insisted not to change the fluid. Should I change it now and change it every 25 to 30,000 miles? Yes, I would if I were you. Now, it's a Toyota product. Probably the best CVT transmissions in the world are the ones that Toyota makes. But any fluid is going to eventually get dirty, get friction, start wearing parts off. Dirty fluid with extra friction will eat the seals. Then if, say, the rear main seal to the transmission leaks. Boop, boop, you got to pull it off the engine to fix it. Talking about big money. Yes, I change it now and then I change it every 30,000. Do it yourself, then you know it's right. You buy the fluid at the dealer, you want the right fluid, get it at the parts department and learn how to change it yourself. It's not that hard to do. Then you know it's right. I've seen people have the fluid changed by clowns that didn't know what they were doing and the transmission went out and I say, hey, they didn't put the right amount of fluid back in. It's not that hard to learn and do it yourself, so do that. It's not that hard. Hiram Bach 26 says, my floor vibrates at idle. I got an 03 Mercedes Benz 500, 116,000 miles. I feel it when it's drive stopped at a red light and it's worse than the compressor's running. All new belts and pulleys. The mechanic told me motor mounts are bad. What could it be? He's probably right. Checking to see if they're bad isn't that big of a deal. I have a video called how to replace bad motor mounts on your car. Watch that video. It shows how you can check the mounts. Basically, you get a floor jack. Then you get a piece of two by four. You put it under the engine and slowly jack it up. And as you slowly jack it up, you watch the engine. As you jack it up, the car and the engine should all go up the same. If you find out the engine starts going up, but the body isn't following it, then look and you'll see the motor mounts where they're broken, where they're separated. As you jack it up, you'll see that they're cracked. Very well could be the motor mounts are going out. Or the transmission mounts too. They all work together. The motor bolts to the transmission. There's mounts on both of them. Any breakage is going to cause that. It's easy to check. Now, it is a Mercedes-Benz, so the parts cost a fortune and they're a real pain in the butt to change out. So, <laughs> it's a no fun job. But, I mean, it's a 20-year-old car. The rubber eventually will rot and rip and then it'll 
shake like that. Frank123 says, are alternative refrigerants safe? What do you think of using hydrocarbons like R290 as a refrigerant and automobile air conditioners? I've heard good and bad. I'm wondering what you think. The problem is the original refrigerant, which we called Freon, which is R12, worked fine, but it supposedly ruined the ozone layer. So then they came up with R134A. That didn't ruin it as bad, but it did somewhat, and it didn't cool as well either. Now they got this R1234YF. That's the new one that's $100 a pound that they say doesn't ruin the ozone layer, but unfortunately it is flammable. The others were not flammable. You get in a wreck if there's a flame, you may blow up because of your refrigerant because these government morons came up with the idea we want to save the ozone layer completely. So we'll let people have a flammable refrigerant in their car that might start on fire and kill them if they get in a wreck. Yeah, we got some geniuses in Washington, right? Well, what do you expect? These idiots don't know anything. They're just whatever they're told, they believe it's real. You know? It's just a fantasy world they live in. A lot of people have come up with other refrigerants that can work. Now, a lot of them will cool. The problem is, are they compatible with the rubber in the system? Are they compatible with the oil that's used? Because to give you an example from the old ones, the R12 that we called Freon had mineral oil, right? Then they went to R134A. It has to use an ester oil, a pure oil. You can't use mineral oil in them. So if you put 134A in a 12 system and didn't change the oil out, it would ruin the compressor because the oil wouldn't work right because it doesn't mix with that refrigerant. So there's so many variables. I do not advise using something that it wasn't designed for. They will blow cold. I mean, guys used to use propane in them and that'll work to get them cold. But of course, that's extremely flammable. And if you get a leak, boof, and there's a fire, you'll burn up in flames. So I don't advise trying that at all. A lot of rednecks did it. Some of them burn up. You're best to stick with what it was made for because of the refrigerant and the systems. You don't know what's going to destroy what in the long run when it comes to chemical reactions inside an AC system. Well, you remember Hertz was throwing people in jail saying they stole the cars, had the police arrest them when they didn't steal the car. Well, Avis is kind of following up. Avis charged the customer $6,000 for renting a car for three days. Of course, they screwed up. That's one reason I tell people, here's something you really want to do so you don't get any hassle. You rent a car, first thing you do, get your phone go all around the car. So you can see if there's any dings or dents, and even if you miss them, they'll be on the camera. So they say, you put that dent in, you say, nope, look, this was there before, right? And the other thing is, take a picture of the odometer for the mileage. So they can't argue about the mileage. Take a picture of the mileage when you get in and take a picture of the mileage when you leave. Then they can't pull any baloney on you because you have proof. There's out that a woman was renting a car. She had to put $1,000 down on it. And so she checked her credit card because it was $1,000, right? And she noticed there was an Avis charge for $6,137. And the only way she got her money back was by going on media, complaining, and then guess what? They gave her her money back. And isn't the only one in April, Avis charged the customer $4,000 saying they kept the car 34 days more when they had returned it to an airport and flown away. Take videos, your camera will have a date stamp on it. And they'll be able to see it. So you don't have to deal with these companies trying to rip you off. The big corporations, you know, they're dead from the neck up. They don't know what's going on. So have a standby proof. Take videos of rental cars when you rent them and then when you take them back. So they can't pull any BS on you. Well, old Elon's at it again. He sold 7.9 million Tesla shares. And interestingly enough, it's amid the Twitter legal battles. He's going, maybe he has to pay his lawyers. <laughs> Now, at the time he sold it, that was worth $6.88 billion. No particularly small move. He's got to pay his legal bill now for <laughs> saying he's going to buy Twitter, and now he's not buying Twitter. Who knows? Maybe he's starting to bail out, realizing that the end is near for his Tesla company. More competition's coming for electric cars. He keeps raising the prices of those cars. Every day, he seems to raise the price of the cars. What do you think? There's an endless limit of money people have to buy their cars with? Any other manufacturer, they kept raising it like that. People would wonder, hey, what's going on here? Who's buying those things? Old Elon's selling his stock little by little. I mean, anybody that thinks it's a good investment to invest in that company, as far as I'm concerned, lost their marbles. It's way overvalued. They just keep raising the prices. People keep buying it for now, but not forever. You can't just keep raising prices of things. People eventually will say, look at the other options out there. I'd buy something else that is made correctly. Doesn't have body panels that don't fit. Don't have cars that are burning up in flames. If ever that electric cars became normal in this country, where's the electricity coming from? You know, where's the infrastructure? It doesn't exist. It seems like a game the guy's playing. He's got all that money. He's playing games while people are buying a stock in his car outrageous prices and then thinking everything is hunky dory. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!